Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 25th regular meeting of the Board of Education. I'm Kate Borninski. Um, I would like to send out some good wishes to Vice President McCoyne, who is recuperating from surgery that she had yesterday. Um, and I would also like uh, my fellow board members to introduce themselves, starting on my right. Doug Brooks, thanks for coming out tonight. Good evening. I'm Anupam Chuk Sadhu. Thanks for being here. Leonardo Savage, thank you for being here. Hi, uh, John Lazaro, thank you for coming out tonight. Okay, Ms. Merritt, would you like to introduce your staff? Good evening and welcome. I'd like to begin by introducing my assistant, Ms. Elizabeth Adams, and I want to thank Liz for taking the minutes um, each of our meetings so that people that are not able to be here can understand what uh, work the board is doing in our board meetings. Also I'd like to thank Charlie Jones. He's our man behind the scenes who's taping our videos for that same impact so people have an opportunity to watch the work of the board. I'd like to ask the remainder of the staff to introduce themselves to you beginning with Mr. Brandon. Good evening everyone. Nick Brandon, Executive Director of Communications and Marketing. Welcome. Hi, I'm Debbie Piaz. I'm the Chief Finance and Operations Officer. Welcome. Good evening, Liz Vartanian, Human Resources. Good evening, Kurt Tiskwitz, Executive Director of Student Services. Good evening, Heather Colombo, President, Education Association. And would everyone please stand for the pledge? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda is the consent agenda, the approval of the consent agenda, and adoption of the agenda. It's action item 1906.85. I'm looking for a motion on this, please. Madam President, I move that we um, adopt the agenda, approval of consent agenda, action item number 19-06-85. Second. The motion was made by Member Sidhu and seconded by Member Brooks. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Ms. Merritt, do you want to take us through the consent agenda, please? Thank you, President Borninsky. The consent agenda this evening consists of human, trans, uh, human resources transactions since our last time together. We are still hiring champions, believe it or not. We are hiring, this is the last meeting of the school year, so we are hiring the replacement position for Dr. Lopez, and we're very pleased to talk about the addition to, to our team this evening. Also, we are hiring for next year, so you're, for your consideration, we have teacher hires for next school year. We have leaves, resignations, and retirements, as well as the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on June 11th and the special meeting on June 17th, 2019. We have the first reading of policy 6605, that is crowdfunding, and policy 725001, renaming existing policies. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay. Um, would you like to introduce? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have the honor of introducing our new Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. It's Dr. Denise Lilly. So Dr. Denise Lilly, come on up. We are very fortunate that um, Denise applied for this position, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. She has received her bachelor's degree in English from Western Michigan University, her master's degree in K-12 administration from Eastern Michigan University, her educational specialist degree in educational leadership from Eastern Michigan University, as well as her PhD in educational leadership from Eastern Michigan University. Denise has served in the following roles, an English teacher, assistant principal at Monroe High School, assistant principal at Central Middle School, and she has been the principal of Field Elementary School since 2011. She'll be joining us here in Central Office in this position of Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion starting on July 1st. So welcome, Denise. 
Thank you. Would you like to share a few words with us? Sure. First and foremost, thank you all for this wonderful opportunity. I am looking forward to working in a different capacity here in the school district. Of course, it's bittersweet as I'm leaving Field Elementary School, but I am absolutely certain that they will just be fine. Uh, I adore the students there, and I know that the staff who's by far the hardest working staff that I've ever worked with will continue to do the wonderful work that we have been doing over the past 80 years. So again, just thank you for the opportunity and I look forward to working in a different capacity in the district. Great. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> so next I would like to introduce to you some new staff members who will begin for the 1920 school year so first Lauren Angelo come on up Lauren Lauren comes to us with a bachelor's degree from Michigan State University. We met her at the job recruitment fair when we went to MSU, and she is going to be a new elementary teacher at Smith Elementary School. So welcome, Lauren. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's okay. Next, we have Tracy Basanko, who's going to be a new school nurse. She comes to us with over a year experience at Detroit Receiving Hospital and she also has her bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University. Next we have Abigail Sievers. Abigail is going to be teaching at Discovery Middle School. She will be a co-teacher for math and language arts. She comes to us with a bachelor's degree from Hope College. Sarah Street. Welcome Sarah. Sarah is our new teacher consultant here in the district. She comes to us with um, six years of experience from Hamilton Academy and also a year experience from Midland Public School. She has a bachelor's from Concordia College and a master's from Eastern Michigan University. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Next, we have Victoria Weatherspoon. We also met Victoria at one of our job recruitment fairs. Victoria comes with, to us with over 10 years of experience with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University. And she is going to be a classroom teacher at Tonda Elementary School. So welcome to all of our new hires. So I'd like to once again acknowledge um, all of our new hires. Thank you for joining Plymouth Canton Community Schools, and I know you will join us in being champions for our children. And I'd also like to recognize once again our Dr. Denise Lilly, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and we thank you for the service that you will continue to provide our school district. Thank you. Um, and now we are at another wonderful time in our agenda, which is celebrating success. And tonight, members Sudu will be presenting, um, and uh, Ray Miller from Plymouth High School is being awarded. Good evening, everyone. Um, as we know, this is one of the highlights of the evening because we get to celebrate some of the great things that are happening in our district. So tonight, we are celebrating success with um, honoring Plymouth High School boys lacrosse head coach Ray Miller, who is also a math teacher at Plymouth, with the Mary Beth Carroll Extra Miler Award. 
Coach Miller was recently named the 2019 U.S. Lacrosse Michigan Coach of the Year after leading his team to the state quarterfinals. Coach Miller's team also won its division in the KLAA, a regional championship, and set a school record for the wins in a season. In order to reach the state quarters, Plymouth had to beat two top 10 teams, Northville and Celine, both of which had defeated Wildcats earlier this season. So at this time, I would like to invite Coach Ray Miller to the podium. Can you say a few words about your student athletes and the great season you've had? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, similar to receiving the U.S. Lacrosse Coach of the Year Award, I'm very humbled and honored to be the Mary Beth Carroll Extra Mile Air Award. Um, our season success this year and past years is due to hardworking, dedicated student athletes buying into the program, believing in each other, and getting better each day. I love being an active member of Plymouth Canton Community Schools. Whether I'm teaching, coaching, event managing, sitting in on interviews, or doing anything else to ensure student success. It is an honor to be a part of our community and to work every day with outstanding students, student athletes, parents, boosters, teachers, coaches, secretaries, support staff, and administration. They're also great, and so many of my peers could be standing up here nervous accepting this award. <laughs> principal Sherry Steckel and Assistant Principal Luke Swanson are the best bosses I've ever had, uh, ever had worked for. Um, Luke has been a huge support from an administration standpoint and has helped continue to make all of our athletic programs very successful. All of Plymouth High School secretaries are wonderful. However, um, Sharon Britton has been a great help, helping me every day with athletic related questions. She also does a ton of work behind the scenes to make our athletic program successful. I could go on and on, but the last person I'd like to acknowledge is Krista Miller. The past six years, she's gone above and beyond as the Plymouth Boys Lacrosse President. She's probably the most organized and dedicated individual I've ever met, and I've learned a great deal from her. Thank you again for taking the time to acknowledge me tonight. Thank you, Ray. On behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to present you with the Mary Beth Carroll Extra Miler Award. Thank you. Thank you. And would you like to go around yes. and shake their hands? Congratulations. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. 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 I want to thank um, Member Brooks and Member Lazarowitz for joining me at the Starkweather um, Academy graduation. And uh, as usual, it was just a wonderful ceremony and very, very touching. Um, and then I also wanted to recognize Member Brooks and Member Sidhu who um, joined me in Lansing last week. So thank you for, for that. Um, Next is the Student Performance and Achievement Committee. Are you ready, Member Sudu? <laughs> I am ready okay. uh, because, you know, I actually gave my update at the last meeting, but I just wanted to uh, get everyone's attention on item F1 because we talked about this at the last meeting where I gave an update on the SPA um, meeting. We are looking at a new intro to manufacturing course and then looking at a new textbook because we realized the old textbook was no longer compatible with our software. So that's a first reading. <coughs> actually, that's a final reading. So we will be voting on that because we actually got an update last time. And um, we will not be scheduling meetings until we have new leadership in July and figuring out what that schedule looks like. So keep an eye out in July for our meetings for the 2019-20 school year. I know. <laughs> Um, next is the policy committee. Um, Member McCoyne is not here, but um, we worked on um, a couple of new policies. One is the renaming existing facilities, uh, and I should back up. 
we met last week. <laughs> um, the renaming existing facilities policy, which we have separated out from um, naming new facilities. And then also the crowdfunding policy, which um, is also new. And then we are also working on um, updating a few other policies. Um, but the renaming is existing facilities policy and the crowdfunding policy we are doing first reads on in our, um, they were in our consent agenda tonight. Um, next is finance and operations. Um, did um, Treasurer Kehoe leave anything with you, Mr. Brooks? Well, just to uh, tell everyone that we had talked about uh, future financing options um, for the district and uh, uh, we went over final budget amendments with a power, real nice PowerPoint presentation and a budget document and then um, the final statement ending um, statements ending 531 2019 and then we ended with remaining bond projects an update for the summer so if you'd like to elaborate and then we'll hear um, the the presentation that Paul Stoddard from PFM made um, shortly um, and he's going to come back today to the full Board of Education and share that information with you all and then later on the in the in the agenda is the resolutions for both the um, amended 2018-19 general fund and all fund statements as well as the 2019-20 proposed um, budgeted um, financial statements so you'll hear both those presentations later on this evening thank you um, Next up is the superintendent's report. Thank you. And it was uh, great having Coach Miller here this evening. His award is just one of the many accomplishments to celebrate our student athletes at PSEP. I want to take this opp opportunity to also give a shout out to our Plymouth girls soccer team. They made an amazing run all the way to the MHSAA state championship game last week in East Lansing. We want to congratulate Coach Jeff Nesich and his team for making the district so proud, not only on their performance on the field, but also for their conduct and their contributions off the field and in the classroom as well. They continue to make us so proud. Now you often hear me quote the African proverb, it takes a village and an integral part of our village here in PCCS that works really hard to keep our students safe and our staff safe, our school resource officers. These are amazing leaders. They not only protect, but they work hard as a part of our educational team to help build relationships with our students, empowering our students to really take ownership of their environment and work hard at keeping their environment safe. I had the honor of spending the first couple of days with our SROs this weekend at the, their 29th National Conference and that's the National Association of School Resource Officers where I accepted on behalf of our school district the prestigious 2019 <coughs> Chief Nicholas uh, Durz's Safe Schools Leadership Award and I just want to take an opportunity today to thank Director Joshua Meyer and the Canton Public Safety Department for nominating me for this award but more <coughs> importantly for their commitment to working together in partnership with our district to make the best and safest environment for our students and staff. Um, we never do this work for the recognition, um, but we definitely appreciate that acknowledgement of the work that we do in creating a safe learning environment for our students. And talking about our village, I also just want to recognize that we are at the last school meeting of the year, so I want to thank again our incredible staff, the Village PCCS, for supporting our students through this 2018-19 school year. Whatever role you play in this district, you have been a part of their success. So I want to say thank you, and now it's time for a much-deserved break to relax, recharge, and connect with your own personal village. So thank you again, and we had a great school year. Okay. Thank you. Um, next up is citizens' comments. I have one card. Um, and I want to remind everyone how it works is that Mr. Brandon has, um, will have a timer up on the screen so everyone who wishes to speak will get three minutes. Um, okay. first, um, first and only so far is um, Carrie Ray. <coughs> Hi there, thank you very much. Um, I really just want to talk about one subject and it's the Plymouth Canton Marching Band Program as well as the whole music program at Plymouth Canton. Just like all these other successes, 
that has a history of phenomenal success and our program has somewhat imploded this year as we all are aware of and I'm hoping that with the two new positions and I'm focused on Liz because you'll be involved in that process we've got two you know hopefully one one is already on the docket to replace Mr. Thoman and we have a new one hopefully being I believe approved tonight if with the budget would that be approved so yes. so all I'm asking for is that we can truly open our minds and and step back and look at what's best for our kids and look that we had a person in place for that percussion director that person is going to be applying for this job he's been doing this job for five years and doing an amazing job and I just plead that we focus on what is best for the kids let's take the politics in the past out of this and let's do what's right because there's only one person and he, being himself and if he comes into that position we not only can get our kids back doing what they should be doing and focused on enjoying their their arts and crafts and also being able to march in a world-class winter percussion next year and he will be the only person who will be able to allow that to happen based on the rules of the WGI and also not only that but I've been approached by the um, president of the board as well and instead of a divided force we are all one working to try and get everything back in the right place and have you know have him back and have hopefully a director that will also work together as a team and they can all work together and do what's right for our kids and we appreciate that very much thank you thank you is there anyone else who wishes to speak okay um, then we will move on to administrative reports and recommendations first up is teaching and learning um, we have several final readings or a couple of them anyway tonight um, the first one I I think both of these members Sudu talked about yes. during her spa report um, so the first one is a action item 190690 um, it's consider approval of resolution to approve the introduction to manufacturing course beginning with the 2019 2020 school year it's a final reading looking for a motion on this please <coughs> Madam President, I'd like to make a motion for uh, action item 190690 to consider approval of a re resolution to approve the introduction of manufacturing course beginning with the 2019-2020 school year. Okay. Um, second. Okay. So the motion was made by Member Lazarowitz and seconded by Member Brooks. Is there any discussion? Any questions? I'd just like to add that this is uh, our partnership with SME Foundation, and we've had great success with them over the past year. So this is a creation of uh, a new course, the Introduction to Manufacturing, and it just speaks to the relevancy of how we continue to adapt our offerings to meet the needs of the real world. So as kids go out into the real world, we need to make sure that we're offering courses that help them adapt to what's out there in terms of jobs and skills. So we're excited about this offering. This is one of many to come. And um, we are also hoping to expand some of these courses beyond Starkweather. So it's starting with Starkweather, but the hope is to expand it to um, other buildings in the park. So just wanted to make sure that people knew these are great classes that we're introducing to our kids to expand the opportunities for them to gain knowledge that's relevant for the workforce. Any questions? Discussion? No. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Um, next is action item 190691. Consider approval of a new tex textbook, Century 21 Accounting General Journal. It's a final reading also. Do I have a motion on this, please? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion for action item 190691 to consider approval of the new textbook, 21st, I'm sorry, Century 21 Accounting General Journal, final reading. Second. Okay. Motion was made by Member Lazarowitz and seconded by Member Brooks. Um, again, any discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay, next is finance and operations. 
Ms. Piaz. Oh, thank you. Um, tonight we're here with us, Paul Stoddard. He's a principal with uh, um, PFM, our financial advisor for the school district, and he's going to talk to you about some financing options school districts have to in order to fund capital resource needs throughout the school district. He's going to go through a series of slides and then offer on the board anytime um, want uh, additional questions, um, either during or after his presentation. Paul, <clears throat> thank you. Um, we actually uh, began looking at these uh, financing options for uh, Plymouth Canton. Um, nearly a year ago um, because you were getting at the tail end of the uh, capital improvement program uh, associated with the, the last uh, approved voted bond um, and the tax base has been um, expanding at a, a pretty rapid rate um, recovering from uh, the the lows of the 2009 and 10 period where you can see on this chart the taxable value was uh, declining somewhat um, for the past couple of years, uh, the valuation has grown uh, at a rate of around 5%, um, which on a constant millage rate would produce uh, significantly more revenue uh, for, for the district. Um, the next chart here uh, is a, a snapshot of the, uh, the, the bond payments in place and the associated millage. Uh, currently, the district is at uh, four mills, or 4.02. Um, and next year, just a year from now, that millage rate would not be necessary to support the, the bond obligations in place. Um, in fact, in the far right column uh, is a calculation of the amount of millage um, drop-off that we see projected out into the future um, with just the the bonds in place so starts out at about a 0.92 drop next year 0.98 uh, 1.06 mills and then uh, from there begins a very rapid decline um, you can see the about the middle of the page existing UT payments um, and you can see the significant decline or drop-offs in those payments uh, that are uh, in place for the, the years ahead. So for, for capital uh, project financing, uh, you, you essentially you have uh, three options. Use your general fund, um, which would obviously detract from your operating uh, base. Uh, you can uh, vote a sinking fund millage or you can vote bonds. Um, Plymouth has uh, historically used bonds uh, to, to finance capital improvements um, and has had a millage rate in that four mil range for at least 10 years. Um, it's been a long time at that, uh, at that level. Um, <coughs> around your area, um, there's, a, there's a variety of millages, and I think there's one slide at the end here we'll, we'll uh, look at that shows uh, what the capital improvement millage is in place for uh, districts in your area. Um, so this chart depicts uh, a sinking fund millage. So if, if we were to uh, ask the voters to approve a millage rate uh, for sinking fund purposes, um, it, it would produce and, and not, not increase the, the, the capital millage that you have now. <clears throat> so essentially continue levying 4.02, um, but use some of that millage for a sinking fund. <clears throat> a sinking fund in this case um, would generate uh, nearly $6 million uh, if levied in 2020, about $6.5 million the following year, um, and as much as $7.1 million uh, three years out. And we think these are pretty conservative estimates because the, the growth rate used here for the tax base is 3% growth next year and then 2% uh, over the long haul. Um, for projection purposes, we don't want to get too aggressive with those numbers um, because if the economy, you know, slows down on you and you don't get the, the growth, um, you know, the, the projections um, won't be valid. <clears throat> um, so you can do a sinking fund for 
uh, up to three mills for up to 10 years. Um, this example <coughs> uses um, one and a quarter mills, uh, a sinking fund, and you can see by the fourth year out, um, you would already have capacity to levy that full amount within the 4.02 mil total. Um, <clears throat> a, a sinking fund is a, a permission to levy. It's not, uh, it's not required. Um, you can ask for uh, an amount up to a, a three mils, um, but from that you can levy whatever is uh, appropriate in your community for your uh, particular needs. Uh, the next chart <clears throat> uh, shows a couple of options for uh, potential additional bond financing. Um, I will tell you that, that uh, these numbers, I think, are very conservative. And uh, I think you could uh, easily do more within the constraint that we have here. Um, so this is really just for illustrative purposes. Um, I know you've got a capital uh, improvement planning effort underway, and that's going to uh, you know, tell you where, where you need to be and, and, and what kind of investment is needed. Um, so this is just for illustration purposes to show you kind of, uh, you know, what kind of capacity you have out there. <clears throat> so the first one uh, at $135 million um, is a 25-year bond issue. Um, and it is within the existing 4.02 mils. This assumes that uh, you would uh, seek approval for a sinking fund levy it in 2020, and then in 2021, you would opt to uh, replace it with a, a bond millage and allow the sinking fund millage to, uh, to lapse, um, effectively not levy it. Um, the second example there is at 170 million, again, these are 20-year are bonds, uh, and again, within the 4.02 mils, and this assumes that the district would seek approval for that sinking fund, levy it for two years at about that mill level, um, and then replace it with a continuation uh, of a bond millage. Um, so you have a lot of, of options uh, available to you in terms of, of what you do. Obviously, um, it relies on um, the uh, uh, approval of your, of your voters. Um, They've been very good at uh, uh, allowing you to, to maintain a, t a tax rate around that four mil level, and, and this assumes that um, they would uh, be favorable to continuing that, uh, that support. <coughs> um, the next uh, couple of charts um, really are, are detail on the, uh, the bonds that are projected here uh, and how they would uh, look over time, uh, adding to the overall debt of the district. And you can see on the, out on the right-hand margin there, uh, in the first model, the sinking fund is just levied for that one year. Um, and similarly, when you get up to the $170 million level uh, on the next chart, that, that millage is just levied for sinking fund for two years. Um, and then we allow it to lapse, uh, opt, not to levy it and instead uh, have the, the levy go towards the bonds. <clears throat> um, I don't know if it had, anybody had any questions on the detail. I, I, I brought it and put it in here. We talked about it somewhat at, at, at finance, um, uh, but I wanted to, to, to bring it here in just in case uh, there were questions on it. Questions? Yeah, so how much is it going to cost a homeowner a year with taxes with these mills? I mean, was there projections with cost factors? Like how much is it going to, is it going to go up, the taxes? <coughs> um, how much? No, the tax, the tax rate in, in any of these options is not. I, I missed your meeting yet yesterday. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry I did. I, That's I okay. An so the, the tax so, the tax rate is not projected to to go up in any of these scenarios, so it it just continues at the level 
as that, it is now? That it is now. Yeah. Okay, so we just continue on with the debt. Right. The district has levied uh, 4.1 mills for the last many years. Um, it dropped to the 4.02 mill level um, just recently, and, and so we forecast it out at that, that same tax rate without an increase. And the bonds are the same way? Correct. Correct. It's all about how you structure the payments. Um, there's a lot of capacity within that four mil tax rate okay. uh, to, uh, to do additional borrowing. I, um, I have a couple of questions, and I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't be able to go to the FNO meeting yesterday, but um, the scenarios that you've discussed both seem to be that we would first go out for a sinking fund and then we would um, at some later date either a year or two years later we would ask the community for a bond is, is that that's correct? that's the scenario okay yes. so we would have we would have two <coughs> elections in both scenarios that we would have to ask voters for um, for money that's correct basically. okay um, are there any concerns about having two elections so close together? Will, will the community um, understand, like, if we say we're not going to levy the sinking fund, um, I guess I worry that <coughs> the voters might be thinking, well, we're just taking your word for it. And um, I, Have other communities done this? I, I guess I, I, it makes me a little <coughs> worried. <laughs> so I don't know what was discussed yeah. at the meeting. So. Um, th there, there have been uh, schools that have put both a sinking fund and a, a bond proposal on the same ballot mm -hmm. um, with, with success. Um, it is, uh, you know, the, the, the sinking fund um, option um, is, is not one that has been uh, used really frequently in Michigan because of the limitations on the uses uh, that are permitted for, for that vehicle. Um, so I think there's been uh, somewhat limited experience in, in that regard. Um, but there certainly have been bond proposals put together with that message mm -hmm. and with the school boards following through with that message and, and, and changing the levies to, to match what the voters' expectation is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so to clarify, um, there are certain things that you can use sinking fund for and there are certain things you can't. And so how it was explained to me is um, it's kind of bricks and sticks on the sinking fund. If you put it as part of the building, then it's allowable. But it, if it can walk away, if we sold the building and you could physically take it out of the building like furniture, then it's not allowable. So if you wanted to refurnish all your classrooms, you couldn't use sinking fund dollars to do so. You'd have to use a bond issue to do so based on current legislation. The other th big one is um, um, technology mm -hmm. you can use technology that touches the classroom but you cannot use technology that touches like the administration so we couldn't replace our computers here in the administration building because they don't touch a student third is buses the exemption under sinking fund rules currently is um, buses and bus replacement and as you know we have uh, about 140 of those and we've been replacing those with bond dollars because we cannot use sinking fund dollars for that. In addition, we're in the middle of our 10-year master plan. We're not quite finished yet. Um, we hope to finish shortly, but just the first couple of roofs, parking lots, and other major repair projects were well over um, almost $200 million in needs that so were not quite finished yet. So I think the, the thinking was at the FNO committee yesterday that potentially we would uh, miss an opportunity if we didn't go out this fall for something, mm -hmm. um, but that a sinking fund might be something that we could um, coalesce around. Um, but the election dates are such that the board would need to vote on um, a resolution on July 23rd at its organizational meeting.
and then be um, given the language to the clerk's office by I think August 13th in order to be on the ballot in November. So we wouldn't want to miss that opportunity with the fall off of the debt millage in, in, in 2020. We're not quite ready for another bond issue. We're still finishing up the one we have, but then we'd be able to come to the community with full-blown disclosure, transparency about what we intended to do and need in a subsequent year to be able to go over um, another bond issue at that point. To, yep. to add Understood. on that, oh. <laughs> to uh, Trustee Lazarowitz, when we're talking about that rate falling off and that ability to go out without increasing taxes. So as that rate falls off, if, there's, if we're not asking our uh, voters to go out and really continue to keep that stable, then that is money that then returns back to um, your taxpayers pockets it might be more difficult at a later date to then say hey we're looking for a tax increase so the idea is to try to keep our um, millage rate this st the same by levying up to that amount and so then that would help to fund some of these infrastructure needs that we have and um, when we're talking about I think to Mr. Stardard's uh, we only have three ways to really fund our projects we can look at our general fund which we know is already taxed we can look at the sinking fund as an opportunity to really take care of the bricks and mortar system. When we think about our community, it's really an education to say we need to take care of properties because as long as our buildings are sound and we're taken care of, that's going to really support the um, financial well-being of, of the community. And then as we're looking to this 10-year plan, the visioning of how we want to adjust our programs and, and what we know our kids deserve in, in, in terms of um, maybe some of the, I don't know how you describe it, the, the uh, 21st century classrooms for example furniture and things along those lines that would be something that would be a, a bigger visioning like a, a bond for example so now it's about educating so you can look at your different options is that something that we would want to go out and do a bond right away do we want to say let's take care of get a sinking fund or ask for a sinking fund to support the infrastructure of our buildings and as we complete this 10-year project it would really be about educating to say is it now time to go out for a bond or is there a combination of both and so the timing is important um, because as uh, Ms. Piaz said if we're trying to for example make a decision to go out in November then we would have to declare that um, by August the 15th so we have two board meetings in between that time um, one thing that we do want to suggest there is an FNO meeting scheduled for the 22nd of July um, and we can talk about that maybe this evening it would be great if the um, full board could participate or maybe the better option would be if your schedules allow <coughs> instead of having this presentation at FNO we just call a special meeting that evening and really just use a work session to kind of bring some more information um, answer a lot of questions because we'll be asking you to make a decision are, are we ready to go out uh, to the voters and um, talk about our needs and talk about the different ways in which we would like to fund those needs um, this is more for Ms. Pia, Piaz, I think. Do we know the um, cost of an election? Um, I don't. If it's in November, though, um, there's other communities participating, especially this in. in um, well, I know. It, um, I think the city of is the city of Plano? city elections will be this right. But I November. don't think the townships are having anything. Right. So it would be a sub substantially lower cost to go in November than in March or May, because March or May, you may not have anybody else under the on the ballot. And then if it's a special one just for you, then you get the full cost of that election. Right. Is it could we um, prior to that um, July 22nd meeting, can we get that kind of information? And also, um, who would be administering the election? Would it be a all three communities or would it be um, one in charge no it'd be all three all your all okay. your taxing units would have to participate okay. that have um, Plymouth Canton community schools within their boundaries okay so four or five because if we have Salem Township and yeah yeah and so superior too yep okay okay um, yeah so if we could have an estimated cost of the elections um, <coughs> depending on when they are taking place that would be helpful okay other questions question about the July 22nd FNO meeting um, 
Superintendent Merritt said that there could be a special meeting. Is that something you, we want to discuss now or later? I would love for you to discuss it now. So if we could, if that's the direction we want to go, secure the date, then we can hold that as the special meeting versus an FNO and have that same level of discussion and opportunity for questions and education um, with the full board. Let me check my calendar. I assume that um, y Member Kehoe has already said that that yeah, was yes, date was available. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we then if we could um, look at the time and to see if we could do a time that's accommodating for all of us and the public. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, we've done study sessions either at six or seven. So that's after the work day versus during, and either one is fine. Yeah. I like the idea of six because yeah. um, okay. it's just it's good. Six is a good In case time. we go a little longer, Over. I have a lot of questions. Okay. I'm sure, we will. Okay. I'm sure we will. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right, so we'll plan then for a special meeting Leonardo? for a full board on Does that work? July the 22nd, okay. beginning at 6 o'clock. And we'll um, have Mr. Stoddard will also be in attendance, as well as uh, Miller Canfield, uh, Jim Crowley. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stoddard. And next, um, we have action item 1906-86, approval of the 2018-2019 final budget amendment. It's a final reading. Um, let's do a motion and then you can present. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to uh, consider approval of the 2018-2019 final budget amendment final reading action item 1902-86 okay you second it okay motion was made by member brooks and seconded by member lazarowitz okay ms ps We will be brief. Um, Stephanie Trotter is here this evening to help me um, go through uh, both um, the budget amendment for 1819, which is the first time you've seen the amendment um, this year, but you've also um, talked about the proposed is in the next resolution. Um, we've talked about the proposed um, in various board meetings. The proposed, this amendment was first discussed on June 21st, 2018, seems like a long time ago, at an FNL meeting. We then uh, had a board a meeting on June 26th, 2018 to, to bring that to the board um, for vote. Um, we made a first amendment in January and it came uh, at an FNO meeting and then we came to the full board January, February timeframe in 2019 and now we're here this evening. Um, it went to FNO last night and then it, it's a full board meeting this evening. So we've talked about this several times. We wanted to make this um, quick and painless but we could certainly go through any um, details um, you want us to go through so just stop us as we go if you want to or we can wait till the end. And in such the case as uh, this board, we do a PowerPoint as well as we do a budget amendment booklet and so the booklet has far more details that I'm going to show with you uh, this evening but for the um, listening audience they're both of our, are available on the website as well as the proposed um, resolution for 1920 we've talked about that on several occasions now make reference to that as we go through here as well Nick, can you flip up, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this is the general fund, and here we have depicted three separate columns. The first column is that audited financial statements that the board saw by our auditors in the fall of 2018, and that's for the year ended June 30th, 2018. We compare and contrast that to where we're at today, the fiscal year 1819 final amended budget, and then we also have the fiscal year 1920 proposed budget. 
A um, couple things to, to denote is that in the local source revenue line item, those are the property taxes that are levied 18 mills on non-homestead taxable property throughout the school district, so that's commercial property. Then state source revenue is based on the foundation allowance. So you take the foundation allowance times the enrollment, now 90% for September count or October count now, um, and 10% in February. You take that count, full-time equivalents, you multiply that by your foundation allowance, and that's your total, your ceiling. You subtract out the 18 mills from the non-homestead property tax millage, and then the, the result is state aid. That is as easy as it gets as far as the calculation. Um, the, the problem is the politics and then the information you have before you to make decisions before Lansing really gives their final um, decision on state school aid. During this period of time, um, our enrollment has increased slightly from last year to this year, but then it is projected to decrease slightly on a year going forward. So we were at 17,513 FTEs in the audited year. Uh, then we went to 17,538 FTEs in this year. And then our proposed budget is a little drop off of 17,360. As you know, you continue to graduate about 14,000, uh, 14, hundred <laughs> out of the park it feels like 14,000 mm -hmm. 1400 out of the park in Starkweather are graduating out but the incoming um, kindergartners are about 1200 so you have a delta of about 200 FTE that 200 FTE is, make, is made up from some of the school of choice children that we allow to come in our district but not all so we are um, proposing that will go down a little bit for next year mm -hmm. during this period of time also the state source revenue is impacted by the foundation allowance formula. We're a minimally foundation allowance formula school district. So we went from 7631 in the year audited to 7871 or an increase of $240 per pupil that was increased from last year to this year. As we move forward to next year, we're hoping for 180. As you know, they are under recess. They're not coming back to Lansing for several weeks and they're on summer break. And unfortunately, the governor has a proposal the Senate has a proposal and the House has a proposal. The governor's proposal had a base foundation allowance increase of $180 per full-time equivalent student. And it also had some various categoricals, one for special ed, one for um, um, English as a second language learners, and then um, one for at-risk students. All in, it was going to be about $336 per full-time equivalent student for us. But that hasn't been decided yet. The House, of course, or the Senate came out next with their $227 per pupil estimate. They didn't, they, that's what their number is, but they didn't include any categoricals for any of those special interest groups. And then also the House came out and said 180, no categoricals, but maybe we'll do something else. They haven't come to consensus. So for the first time in many years, about eight actually, because we had eight years of pretty much we knew where we stood at this meeting, the last of your meetings for the year, where you are required by the State Budget Act to, re to adopt both an amendment, if it's necessary, as well as a proposal for the next fiscal year. You don't have that information as we sit here today. So you're going to have to do an estimate, and that's what we've done here, both for the pupils that will be here in the fall, as well as the state um, foundation allowance formula. The other biggest number on here is our intermediate source revenue. That's the enhancement millage. So the enhancement millage, we're in year three right now of a six-year millage. Next year will be year four. We'll have to, the, the Wayne County resale will have to go out as a county and determine whether or not we're going to have that enhancement millage renewed or not. And now the enhancement millage um, information or the legislation was changed. So that all comes back to not only public schools, but also charter schools as well. So the six million now that we get from this revenue stream won't be six million in the future. It'll be something less. Still worth it, but a little bit less. And so you'll see here your total revenue stream as you move forward it goes from 168 million to 172 million, and 172 million to about 173 million. You know, roughly about a one to two percent increase in revenue. 
On the flip side, the expenditures, they continue to increase, right? So you have more to pay on contracts, more to pay on staff. Um, health insurance benefits continue to rise. Even though you're a hard cap district, that hard cap still goes up year to year, and your retirement rate still goes up year to year. So basically, you've gone from 162 to 170 to 178 million dollars in, in uh, expenditures over this period of time. That's about a four to five percent increase. So you're constantly trying to manage the increase in revenue, which is substantially lower than the increase in the expenditures. And so during this period of time, you'll see we started with a, um, an, an excess of about $5.7 million, adding to fund equity, giving us about $32.4 million in fund equity, or about 20% of um, expenditures. Likewise, in the amended budget, we're still at about 20%, um, with about a $2 million increase in um, uh, net revenue over expenditures projected for this year that we're standing in. The projected year that we've talked about in the last two board meetings is about a $5 million use of fund equity, and that $5 million use of fund equity will get us down around $29.3 million or 16.5. I always like to point out, those are big numbers, hard to get your head around sometimes. So if you were a family that had a $50,000 annual income, 20% would get you about $10,000 in your savings account. And if you're at 16.5, you're about $8,200 in your savings account. So not a lot of money. It, given our rate of payroll, that would be about two, two and a half months. Okay, Mr. Brandon. Thank you. So this gives you the revenues, less expenditures, so the change in fund equity, like I just said. The two outstanding um, things that we don't know is um, the enrollment. Um, and again, that um, won't be determined until the students show up in the fall and the count date is Oct in October, first Wednesday of October. And then State School Aid Act, which we don't know about. Um, the fiscal year 1819 unknowns is the um, accelerated purchases or where we are by, by Friday because goods have to be received or services have to be re uh, rendered by Friday in order to pay for it in this fiscal year. So again, um, we've been fiscally responsible. We've tried to um, continue to be careful about what we spend our dollars on, but that's what we um, project will be in the general fund um, as of June 30th, 2019, as well as June 30th, 2020. Um, now, Ms. Trotter is gonna come up and talk to you about all the other funds we have within the school district. Good evening. Um, so this is the final, can I have a? Um, this is the final budget amendment for fiscal year 18-19 and for this is for all other funds. So the first column is our beginning balance, which is our audited fund balance for June 30, 2018. If you add in the revenue and subtract the expenditures, then you get to our ending fund balance for June 30, 2019. Starting off with our capital projects fund, we have our athletic capital improvement fund, which is all athletic improvements um, in the district. Our bond capital improvement funds, which is our 2013 bond, which is currently funding our secure entrances. 2015 bond, which is funding the bu um, buses and other capital improvements. And then our 2019 bond, which is the $6.2 million that we issued this year. Our capital improvement fund is all capital improvements that are not funded with bond activities. And then we have our technology device replacement fund where there's no activity because currently we're funding those replacements with bond money. We have our Nichols Trust Fund, which um, is the purchase of library books. We were looking to spend that down, but those library books will not be here by June 30th, so we'll move that into the next fiscal year, and we plan to close that out for 1920. Our debt service fund, <coughs> excuse me, is what um, Debbie refers to as the mortgage on the house. We collect the property taxes for the 4.02 mills, and then we pay the debt service for the principal and interest on voter-approved debt. Our internal service fund is the health care fund. Um, I want to bring your attention to the ending fund balance. So we started off with about a $2 million fund balance. We're actually half of that now. Because when we went back and did our analysis, we noticed that some of our employees have moved to from plan four to plan five, which is a cost savings for them. But that's less contributions into that fund. And then we also have health care um, costs that have increased. We are a self-funded self district. and so. We pay all claims up to $250,000, which is our stop loss. We are going to continue to monitor that fund to see what the impact will be on the general fund going forward. 
Moving down to our special revenue funds, we have our Act 18 center-based program, which is funded through Wayne Risa. Our community service fund, which houses the preschool, community education, and um, extended day. And our food service program, which is how we feed the students with the National School Lunch Program. And then our funded projects, which is the local, which is funded through local and federally funded grants. And any questions on that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? Um, I just wanted to mention that this amendment is something that we do um, twice a year as, um, as the state has required us. So mm -hmm. it's, um, not anything unusual, it's a routine item. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Next, we have action item 190687 consider approval to adopt the 2019 2020 budget for general operating funds and other funds. This is a final reading. Um, Madam President, I'd like to um, make a motion to consider approval to adopt the 19 or the 2019 2020 budget for general operating funds and other funds. Final reading action item 190687. We second it. Motion was made by Member Brooks and seconded by Member Lazaro Witz. Um, are there questions on the budget? Do you want to speak to it, Debbie? I think I've said everything you want to hear. <laughs> 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 It'll be available on the website um, later on. Uh, we post all those things on our budget transparency site, so it'll be up there. Yes, and we did go through it at our budget hearing. Um, I know there were some questions um, that Member Sudu and I sent in about the social sentinel um, software that's included in the budget. Um, my concern is um, satisfied. Are, are you good with that? Or w were you able to review those answers? I, I was. Um, can I ask a question about maybe next steps with that or? I think now would be the time Now would to be do the time, that. okay. So when I looked at the, the answers, looks like we're just going with a social media platform. Yes. And uh, my wondering is, has there been some discussion about using it for email purposes? And if that has, what was the rationale for not including the email filtering? So at this point, um, we were looking, the initial conversation was around um, public uh, sites. And so the social media will just have an opportunity to um, notify of any alerts that are going to public post. And so although the software itself, uh, Social Sentinel started off as a social media um, monitoring system, they have now, um, move towards being able to do the same for um, email accounts. We, the quote that we have is only for the social media, so mm -hmm. we are not interested in this uh, part to, to utilize our students' accounts. All students know, as well as staff know, that we have that ability. Those are accounts that belong to the district, but at this point, we're looking in conjunction with um, the work that we're just doing around student um, mental health and well-being and if we have opportunities if uh, students are maybe identifying some areas that uh, may be of concern just through their social posts that we would be able to get the support that they need so um, we are not interested in exploring the gmail account if ever in the future that is something that we as a district felt a need to do then we would have that opportunity to come back and talk and that could be something that we purchase but this we are not even purchasing that module at this time okay so thank you for that clarification and just the, some of the, the world I live in, uh, one of the things that we're finding out through research and uh, updates in terms of what kids do, because they're very creative and how they communicate, they're starting to use the comment section within Google Docs as a way to have a conversation that's not tracked. 
So it's not necessarily just Gmail that I'd be curious about in the future. It's how do you capitalize on those side comments that kids are so creative about in using the comment section within Google Docs and um, you know all the Google apps. So um, again, not for this year, yes. but looking forward just to see where kids are at and and if if that is of a need, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely would be open to, but wanting this first opportunity for this purpose and uh, see how this software works for us, um, and if it helps to continue to provide an element of more of a preventative nature and yes. support is really the intention. And um, I'm glad that we're um, doing the public searching. So mm -hmm. for me, I was concerned about um, private information being looked at. And um, uh, just uh, in terms of how the system itself works, there is no one monitoring from Social Sentinel. It's all just a computer generated algorithm um, if something goes into that and hits their library of um, words that would be of concern then that would generate a flag to our district personnel that would then um, determine the next step so it's not a person assigned to to review any of the information with social sentinel it would be district run thank you okay, okay. Um, <coughs> any other questions or discussion on the um, action item on the appro to approve the budget I'll just um, put one piece of discussion I just want I know we've been talking about this budget um, for the last few months but I just want to thank the board for your consideration and putting the supports in place as we continue to talk about uh, some of the the challenges that some of our students are coming to school with um, putting the additional supports in place for social workers putting the supports in place for our teachers as they're learning um, uh, continuing to learn the best instructional practices through the supports of instructional coaches. I'm very excited about the possibilities of our future here in PCCS when we give our students and our staff what they need in order to elevate all students. So I thank you for this consideration. Okay. okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. <coughs> Next is action item 1906-88. Consider approval of a resolution to refresh remaining one-to-one -one Chromebooks at the high schools. This is also a final reading. Do I have a motion, please? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of a resolution to refresh remaining one-to-one -one Chromebooks at the high schools. Final reading, action item 1906-88. Second. Motion was made by Member Brooks and seconded by Member Sidhu. Is there um, any discussion on this or questions? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. And next is action item 1906-89, consider approval of resolution to join HPS Cooperative for purchasing of milk products for the 2019-2020 school year. This is also a final reading. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of the resolution to join HPS Cooperative for purchasing milk products for the 19 or the 2019 2020 school year final reading action item 1906-89 i second it okay motion was made by member brooks and seconded by member lazarowitz are there any questions or discussion on this i think we've talked about many of these before <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay. Um, next, we have action items and discussion. Um, before we get to the resolution for the superintendent's contract, um, I just wanted to um, let everyone in, in our community know that um, the board met on June 17th to evaluate the superintendent. And I'm pleased to announce that during our open meeting that evening, we voted to approve um, 
a highly effective rating for the superintendent. We first had a closed meeting and then we voted and, oh, and went into yeah. the open. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that. Yep. Yes, we met and closed and then, open. well, first we were open, then we were closed, then we were open. Thank you. I stuck that which one we were at. Yep. Um, okay, so um, next up is an action item 1906-92, consider approval of resolution for the superintendent's contract. Um, I say this is a first and final reading. Um, this is for an extension of the superintendent's contract. Is, are there any questions? Take a point. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me, my back's killing me right now. Oh, no. <coughs> I just want to make a statement on uh, Monica's character. Can you use your microphone? Yes. I just want to make a statement on Monica's character which is never included in the evaluation. And that is, I'm very grateful for the fact that she is an extremely empathetic person, which uh, a lot of our teachers have as well. But it comes out especially in you, and I'm very grateful for that. And I congratulate you for it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, any um, questions or discussion on the um, extension of the superintendent's contract. Okay. Then um, I would like a motion. I don't think I asked for one yet, did I? Anybody Madam know? President, I'd like to make a motion for action item 1906-92 to consider the approval of the resolution for the superintendent's contract. First and final reading. Second. Okay. A little reversal here. Member Lazarowitz made the motion and it was seconded by Member Brooks. It's kind of busy on this side. <laughs> 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 on the ends. Okay. Um, we already, um, I already asked for discussion, so um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. If I can jump in, I just want to thank the board. Um, we continue to talk about this team of eight, and we work hard to establish that relationship. And I think that um, I know that we would not have as much success in our district if we were not collaborating together. I want to thank you for trusting in me, because I know many years ago when this position um, first uh, Came, became available, that was not the easiest uh, decision for you, but I, I uh, I appreciate you for trusting in me and I hope that you believe that this was the right decision. When we talk about stability, as long as you will have me, I will be right here in this seat. I love this district. I love our students. I love our staff. I love you. I just <laughs> continue to imagine the possibilities and I continue to say there's so much in store when we continue to work together on behalf of kids we are going to leave an incredible legacy here in PCCS so just thank you and I look forward to many years to come so I wanted to say also that um, I believe member Kehoe and I are the only ones left from when um, we first hired you yes. and so we've had a couple of elections since then and the board has turned over somewhat and so I think um, that really speaks to having some stability in the district because the board has turned over but the superintendent has not and so that's very good. You gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, I think we are now at follow-up board questions. Um, we had quite a list, and um, I think from, let's see, I, I'll go through them one by one. Um, the custodial new benchmarks, that's still coming, right? Yes. The we looked at the benchmarks, but we um, were asked to go back and make sure that the administrative team 
um, had some input as well, so we'll keep that on and bring okay. that back to you. Okay. Um, the questions on the Social Sentinel software we, we got. Um, we got answers. Analysis of parent concerns on the school calendar and school start time, that's, I believe, still outstanding. Yes. Analysis of concerns on the school calendar and school start time separated, that is still outstanding, I believe. Um, Cross-reference the staff cleanliness report with the KPI information for the buildings, still outstanding. Cross-reference the staff cleanliness report with the school due data, is still outstanding. Different ways for teachers to report cleanliness issues, still outstanding. And follow up on parent and community members verbatim, um, that was from the survey, and that is still outstanding, I believe. I believe all, the, all of those questions were from the K-12 survey. Yep. I think it's a plan to They're all, that they were all related to it. Related yeah. to. So we'll have those answers um, within board notes as we continue to compile the information. Okay. Um, I don't think I wrote down anything from tonight. Were there any questions? It was that one. I, missed? I thought there were. And that was mine. <laughs> that, that's why I didn't write it down. <laughs> because I can't talk and write at the same time. <laughs> okay. I have one clarification. On the special meeting, are we able to post that yet? Or does there need to be a vote? Or, or are we For a special meeting, we do not need to Okay. Vote. So we can post that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And what was the time of it? Six. Okay. All right. Um, next on the agenda is adjournment. Is there anyone who wishes to make an a motion to adjourn? Anyone? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this session for tonight. I second it. Okay. Motion made by Member Brooks and seconded by Member Lazarowitz. Is there discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. We're now adjourned.